Hi everyone, Melissa Ullman here, the Creative Chatterbox. Today I want to share with you this layout using the Mosaic Diamond Chain that is available right now as a promo, but this particular layout can be created with any knockout style border maker cartridge. And I'll explain that to you when we get to that point. But I just wanted to show you, I created the background of this layout using that punch. Then I also, or border maker cartridge, I also added these wonderful four by four peekaboo pockets and some variety mats with that. All right, so I created one in a vertical format. I'm sorry, this large photo is vertical. The base is horizontal. And this one here I created using a horizontal vertical background. And then I also added on the peekaboo pockets. This is using the Setup Camp Collection. Today though, while we create, I am going to be using the Sweet Summer Collection. I also created this one here using the Painted Garden Collection. So again, you can slide in extra photos here. I double matted these as well. Um, and then added some mats in there. So just to give you an idea, and I used the Zebra Border Maker cartridge for the background of this one. So let's get started, you guys. So we are going to use Sweet Summer. So I pulled out some paper choices here. And it's best if we start by using our base piece as a very neutral piece. And so this one here is the most neutral out of all of this. It's white and it's got some colorful specks in there as well. So let's go ahead and use that as our base. We'll set these others aside for the moment. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our trimmer and we're going to open our housing unit up and we're going to place our perforating blade inside of that. All right, so if you don't have a perforating blade, you most definitely could use a scoring blade. Um, but as we get move farther along in this process with this layout, uh, the scoring blade doesn't keep the paper laying flat. Um, and so I found it to be better using the perforating blade. So we're gonna perforate every inch and a half. So at one and a half, again at three inches and then four and a half and we'll open this up and at six inches at seven and a half inches at nine inches and again at 10 and a half, okay? All right, so now we've scored every inch and a half. We will not need our perforating blade any longer, so we can go ahead and take that out and replace it with our straight blade. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to place our border maker cartridge. So again, this is the mosaic diamond chain. And when I say knockout, it knocks these pieces out of the edge of the paper. So we're going to start first and foremost with this first end, and we're gonna fold it back on the perforated edge. Then we are going to take our arm for our border maker system and we'll place this inside, okay? So putting it up to the edge and folding that back. So we're gonna take this now, and again, we've got this kind of flap here, so we need to fold that back and we need to also 
go very gently along here. So we'll punch once, and you're gonna have to put a little bit more oomph into it because you're punching through two pieces of paper essentially. So then you just move these little notches up along the notch on the base piece here, and you'll feel it kind of fall into the groove, but we'll just keep punching that up like that. Now we are gonna end up with lots of little punch outs. So again, do you guys see when I say knockout, it knocks that shape out of there. All right, so now we're gonna take this out. So that was our first strip over the top of our second strip. Now we're going to take, and there's one perforation here, then you're gonna to go to the next one. So our third strip on top of our fourth strip. So we'll fold it there and then place it into our border maker system. Holding that back. And now this is holding that top in place. Um, so you're still gonna wanna take your time and punching again a little with a little bit more oomph because again we're going through two pieces of paper. All right, so now we're gonna take this out and there's we're gonna put this um, fifth on top of the sixth. Okay, so we'll fold that over there. And when I say that I mean the strips in between like the perforations. Okay, and then place that in there. And we're just going to repeat exactly what we did before. Okay. All right, so now when we open that up, we have that. So now the last one that we're gonna do, we'll just turn it around and fold this last edge over like so and punch it. So it's giving us a nice lacy look um, with the punch outs. Again, go slow just because we have that kind of flat piece of paper that we have to keep in the right place. So we could, if we wanted to, um, we could place this on top of a piece of paper, one piece of paper, use one of the brighter ones here, and have a nice, if you will, kind of lacy look with one color. And that looks nice the way it is. But we're going to just mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna set this base piece off to the side and then I am going to take um, four different pieces of paper, different colors, that you will be able to see behind the opening of this. And so with that, this is great to use extra pieces of paper um, or strips of paper that you might have, but I am going to layer four pieces of paper on top of each other and with that, I'm going to place it on my trimmer at one and a quarter inches. So I'm going to cut. So there's four there, so I have four strips there. And then I'm going to push it over again to one and a quarter inches and cut, okay? So now the rest of your paper you can set aside and we have a total of eight strips of paper, okay, that are one and a quarter by 12 inches. All right, so now let's take just one section at a time and I've put those on top of each other. Then I'm going to place them on my trimmer and I'm going to cut every two inches. Okay, keeping those grouped up together, it just makes more sense to kind of 
layer them up and cut together versus cutting um, one strip at a time. So again, every two inches. And if you get one a little shorter, a little longer, it should be okay. But um, when I say a little shorter, a little longer, not by much. Okay, so now we have those all cut into two inch segments. So now we're gonna do the same with these other strips. We'll place that in there. And keep going. So what it's gonna amount to is you're gonna amount to 48 pieces of paper that are two inches by an inch and a quarter. Okay, so we started off with eight strips of paper and we cut those eight strips of paper into six segments. So eight times six is 48. So here we have our eight or 48 different pieces. What I'm gonna do is because I'm going to be paying attention to the back side um, once we start this. So I'm going to take my mat aside and I am going to be using my blue mat. And this blue mat was a promo from Creative Memories, but it works wonderful. Let me turn it around so it's not, um, so you can see the, it directional there. And the nice thing with this mat is that we can place our piece on top of it using our repositionable and it will not stick. So it's a silicone mat. I'm gonna turn this, this is the piece I want up when we're creating the layout. So I'm going to turn this over so I'm looking at the back side of this. And in doing so, I'm going to take my repositionable and I am going to go along the edge and slightly through the middle of each design. You don't want to um, just take and run it. That's a, a misuse, if you will, of repositionable adhesive. Um, just kind of sporadically in between each one, we'll hold that in place. And I like to just, instead of having to pull out my repositionable tape runner, um, every single, you know, strip. I prefer just to do this um, here all at one time. Let's see, did I go down the middle? I did go down the middle of that one. All right, so now that we have adhesive along the back, I'm gonna take these strips and I'm going to flip them over. Um, and so by doing that, what I'm going to see is the front side through the windows. So I'm gonna take and place that. So the opening on each punch of the Border Maker cartridge is two inches. So that was why we cut these two inch lengths. So it's going to cover up an opening from the back side of two inches. So we're just going to kind of mix up how we are placing that behind. and we'll cover up a two inch window segment at a time. And you don't have to necessarily have any, um, oops, that one's a little bit short. You don't have to have um, necessarily any pattern to it. You just, 
one of these I didn't turn that off a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now when you turn it over, you're going to see those beautiful colors through the window there. So given that, got a little spot that's not sticking, there we go. So now we're just gonna continue to do the same thing um, on the rest of those opened windows there. Just kind of mixing up the patterns from the back side. So there are the different colors that you see through the front side. All right, so we'll just continue doing that. And I see when I turned that over, I got some of my little um, trash pieces. We'll get rid of those there. So the rest of those pieces can stick. So it would be great um, for you when you're creating to really get rid of your trash in between so that you don't get any of that stuck in there. All right. But you don't necessarily have to turn it over till you get to the very end. Um, so that is, is helpful as well. So just continue along your patterns here. So I started with that one there, so now we're just going to, again, just, and once you turn it over, there's not going to be a, you're not going to tell, oh, I use this one here and this one here. Um, it's gonna be different for you. I want to make sure that I don't I stay in between those lines And then you don't want to go outside of the edge. You can overlap on the center if you need to. So it, we variate the patterns here on the back um, because it's really the pattern that we're on the back side of this, on the underside, that we are going to be seeing.
And if you find when you turn it over that some of your colors are too close together um, or one color or pattern too close. So that just gives us a nice variation here, okay? So we can do it either horizontal or vertical. So we are actually done with this mat, so we'll set that aside. And now what we're going to do is we are going to cut um, three pieces that are going to go on the in-betweens here. So I, for that one, am going to use one of the more predominant pieces, and in this case is this blue. So I am going to cut three pieces from it that are a half of an inch. And then we're going to cut three, or I'm sorry, two pieces from it that are a quarter of an inch. So three that are a half of an inch and two that are a quarter of an inch. All right, so now what we're going to do is place these three strips over these perforating marks between these, so one in the center at six inches, okay, and then one at three inches and one at three inches. So when I say three inches, three inches from each edge. So we're gonna go ahead and place a little bit of repositionable adhesive on the back side of that. And then you're just gonna center it, go right on top of that perforating line there. There we go. We'll do the same with the next one. And one in the center there. And then one over here at three inches. And then these two quarter inch pieces are going to go right here along the edge here and then along the edge here, okay? So when I do that, I am going to turn them both over and I'm going to place them right next to each other. And I learned this trick from my creative friend, Sachi. Um, so why waste your repositionable when you can put them right next to each other and roll right over the top of both of them, getting both sides? Okay, so then they're kind of stuck together. So then what you're gonna do is just pull them apart and we are going to then place these along the edges of our layout. Do the same thing on this edge. All right, so now when you are creating the rest of the way, you actually have a decision as to whether or not you want to create it vertical or you want to rotate it and create it horizontal. That is totally up to you. So now we're going to cut mats for this. So we are going to start first and foremost by cutting some mats. So let's go ahead and actually use our bright orange here. And we're going to cut two that measure four and a quarter by four and a quarter. 
that one and another one at four and a quarter. And then we're going to cut one that is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Okay, so then we have these three then that are out of the same pattern. So now we're going to double mat them. So we'll take one of the other pieces and we're going to cut a piece that is, or two pieces, I'm sorry, that is four inches by four inches. And out of this piece, we're gonna cut one that is four by six. Okay, and then we need just one piece of paper that is going to be six and a half by four and a half. Let's go ahead and use this dark blue here. So we'll cut at four and a half and then rotate it to six and a half. All right, so now we'll go ahead and adhere these mats together before we place them onto the layout. So we're gonna start first with the darker one and the big one, and then we're going to layer it up by placing repositionable and centering it on that mat, okay? Then we're going to take the next color, which is our lighter color, and we're going to place that on top of this one. So this is gonna be our hero photo. Okay, we'll set that aside. Then we'll take our two four by four and a quarter by four and a quarter, and we will mat those lighter pieces on top of it. All right. So once we have those done, now we can adhere these to our layout. So these two four inch pieces, now again, we don't have to decide at this point if we're creating vertical or horizontal, but we are going to adhere these so they're on each side of this middle strip on here. Um, so it, and then it's right below the first two inch segment on the top. So go ahead and adhere those. Okay. And once we have those adhered, then we can adhere this one here right below it. And the top and bottom edges are going to go along the top and bottom of these strips. So we'll go ahead and adhere. And I'm leaving about a half of an inch in between here. Okay. So now is when you are going to decide, do you want and or are your photos? So we can rotate this. So now we can put a vertical photo here, but obviously these are still squares, or we can leave it like this. Either way, so again, let me show you these samples. I created one of the um, setup camp. So this is vertical and we're adding on the peekaboo pockets on the side or we have this one where this is horizontal and we're adding the peekaboo pockets to the top. All right, so we are going to want to look at our options for our mats. And these are great, you guys, 
for placing inside or in making our um, titles with on our pages. So recently, Creative Memories has come out with four by four peekaboo pockets. Now these peekaboo pockets are intended, so here is the package, you get 10 of them, um, and it, they are intended to go on the top of your page protector. You don't wanna put these directly on top of your actual layout. You're going to create the layout, which is what we have pretty much done right here. You're going to put it in your album, put your page protector, obviously, with your photos, and then you're going to place your protectors on top of that. But before I do any of that, I like to design them around my layout. So right now, we actually have this one here, right? And it just happens to be, I have cut this at a four by four piece. Um, but look through and determine if you have any of these that you could. So you could definitely cut this into a four by four and use this as part of your. So we'll just kind of take a peek and see what we have. Um, and then you can also do the same thing with the larger ones. And you could determine if any of these can be cut down to a four by four to add into your other pocket um, for your journaling. So this one, we're gonna have to trim down the sides a fair amount, but we could actually definitely get that. Um, or if you wanted, you could put paper in there, you could put lined paper in there as an option. So this is another one that could definitely be cut down, Summer Faves, into a four by four uh, to go into the front of this. So I'm gonna just tuck this in here. And then let's see if we can't cut this one down to measure a four by four. So we have six and a half. We're gonna cut down an inch and a quarter from each side. Okay. And then from the top and bottom, we are going to cut down, it's four and a half, so to get it four, we're gonna cut a quarter of an inch from the top and the bottom. All right, so then that leaves us with four by four, and this one here we can use for our journaling. So I am just going to place those in to the pockets like so. So you see now we have those that can go on top of that. So, and then when you open these, if you want to be reminded that a photo goes here, you could stick in a piece of white cardstock that's four by four. Otherwise, you're gonna cut a photo that is four by four to go in to the tops of it, um, which covers up the backs of that, so you won't need to worry. So right now, we have our title, we have our journaling, and we have one photo, two photo, three, and four. And then down here, so if we have it like so, we can add maybe a handful of stickers or we could even look and see what options we have with our embellishments. So this would be a cute one here with the, just looking to see what we have here, some options. Um, but I feel like the size and whatnot, it would be perfect for us to place this one down here. Maybe with some foam squares, pop those up. So I'll just use some small ones here with that. Like so. And 
we really don't need to because we have a nice title here. So we don't necessarily need to add anything more um, there as well. So if we wanted to, we could, but we don't need to. And then let's look at some smaller pieces we might have um, to be able to add just a touch maybe to our embellishment page. So let's take a look if we've got popsicles and we want to, and we've got them also up here, we could pop them up over here. Um, it, you still can add foam squares to the pieces that you put in your peekaboo pockets. You will still see somewhat of the dimension to take those off. Okay, so like that. And maybe we have, you know, a cute little um, sticker that we have. Here we have yum. So ice cream flip-flops. Um, it's not ice cream, so I think this is going to be the best bet here is just to do, you know, and maybe we want to pop this one up too and kind of place this maybe even under a little bit. So now we have the rest of that. We um, are able to journal and let's just see if we have anything else that we can add. Here we have just a lone one and maybe we want to just pop up one of the popsicles from over here. You know, so we'll just put this on top. So it's just gonna emphasize just that one. Okay, but then it kind of follows through with those all back in there with our theme of popsicles. So that actually completes this layout. You have uh, lots of nice options for adding photos to it if you wanted to. Um, one thing to consider is you can not only just add these four by fours up here, but you could also add a four by six peekaboo pocket over the top of this one to allow for even more photos. The other thing is it is perforated, so you see, but once you put it in your album, um, you aren't gonna see the bends in this layout. It is going to be flat and adhered in your book, so there's no need. Again, remember that you're going to want to put your peekaboo pockets on top of your page protectors. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining. Make sure that you click like, you comment, and you subscribe to my channel, which will help me continue to share with you. All right, you guys, love and blessings until we create again.